So there's another quote that you raised, and which also connects this idea of railing against mortality, which is this really motivating force in your book, is um, one of Shakespeare's. And um, I'm going to see if I can get this one right. He says, um, when all the breathers of this world are dead, you still shall live. Such, is, such virtue hath my pen. Power the pen, yeah. Yeah, such virtue hath yeah, my pen. Yeah, and... Um and so here we are trying to be immortal. Yeah, it fits right language. into the theme because um, here's an example of two deaths mm -hmm. being described within the context of a single work. And the reality is quite distinct from the words that Shakespeare actually uses. He's basically saying, I, Shakespeare, will be forgotten. Yes, then the next right part is how he will die. Yeah, because yeah, he's writing he's, an epitaph. Yeah, he's writing, yeah. ep imagine writing an epitaph for someone to die. And he says, you will carry on because my words, my pen is so powerful mm -hmm. that symbolically you will achieve immortality, whereas the poet will not be remembered. Now, how many people mm -hmm. remember Shakespeare and how many people remember the, the person for the whom the epitaph is written? Mm -hmm. So it's a symbolic version. This exactly sort of reflects right back on Ronk and Becker. It's a symbolic version of reaching beyond the mortal nature that we have. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, um, the, the question arises, you know, in some sense, which is, um, where do you get that symbolic immortality from? So one of the uh, things that captivated me in, in, in reading the various perspectives on these questions is um, uh, a question that I was asked, you know, many years ago after a conversation like this, which was, you know, which would trouble you more, learning that you are going to die, say, in six months, or learning that the entire species is going to be wiped out in six months. And it's a curious question to reflect on, because at least for me, my response to each of those two is completely different. You know, my response to learning that I'm going to die, I think, would be a desire to wring as much life out from the final six months that I have. If, however, I learn that the species is going to be wiped out in six months, there's a sense of, is there any point to doing anything any longer? Because there'll be no longer descendants who will be able to receive anything that we create, either real or symbolic, that we imagine being passed on to the future. So it's an interesting question. Where do you put the weight of your own desire to not be, as Robert Nozick described it, wiped out, erased?